Hello, welcome to today's uh, respiratory system screencast. Today's focus is going to have a look at the neural regulation of the mechanics of breathing. So, so far we've had a look at uh, the relationship between breathing frequency, tidal volume and minute ventilation. We've also had a look at mechanics of breathing uh, at rest and exercise. The next little focus is going to have a look at how we regulate our breathing by using neural and uh, chemical control. So what I'm going to do, uh, just pop over to the next slide. Uh, the specification looks like this. So it asks you to be able to have an understanding of the regulation of breathing during exercise of different intensities. So regulation with regard to breathing, we have to focus on neural control. That is our focus. Uh, and the key knowledge you need really in order to be successful uh, in this part of the specification is you must have a knowledge of neural control in general. So I'm hoping at this point when you see that word neural, uh, you think of receptors. When you think of receptors, you then think of how these receptors can help us regulate both heart rate uh, and vascular shunt. So we've had a look at how uh, the three receptors uh, go into the cardiac control center, then go to the sympathetic nervous system, accelerator nerve, SA node to increase our heart rate. We've also had a look at how the three receptors can actually send information that, uh, well, the same information they detect for all um, exercise is and they will send that into the vasomotor control center remember the vasomotor control center is responsible for vascular shunt and that would vasodilate our arterioles and precapillary sphincters allowing more blood to go towards the working muscles during exercise so that's how we've looked at neural control before it's really important you have an understanding i did say a couple of weeks ago that, that you know receptors are absolutely vital because you have to use them four times so we've used them for heart rate we've used them for vascular shunt now we're going on to have a look at how they impact our mechanics of breathing. Now, the other thing you're going to need, obviously, is the mechanics of breathing during exercise because regulation of breathing um, is really important with regard to different uh, exercise intensities. So we're talking now, we've looked at how, what those mechanics that underpin breathing are, and we've talked about what changes during exercise. Now what we've got to do is add on neural control or neural regulation of the mechanics of breathing so this is absolutely vital these two things neural control in general important but mechanics of breathing during exercise is also absolutely vital so those two things together will give us a really good chance of being able to be successful um, in a neural regulation of the mechanics of breathing question so let's have a look then how are we going to go about it? So in order to regulate our breathing rate uh, via the mechanics of breathing, this is how we do it via neural control. So what we're going to do now, uh, as you would probably be aware, you're going to talk about some receptors. We have to add an additional receptor and we're taking one off for now. So I'm going to explain this as we go through. So the first three receptors we're going to look at are chemoreceptors, proprioceptors and thermoreceptors. Now chemoreceptors as normal, detect an increase in carbon dioxide and a decrease in oxygen, if you want to add that. Uh, proprioceptors detect an increase in muscle movement and then we've got thermoreceptors that detect an increase in blood and muscle temperature. Thermo, temperature, hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. Now once we start exercising, as we know, our receptors detect an increase in these things. Remember, a change is not enough. We've got to say it's increased to put it in exercise context. So from there, these three receptors detect this information and it is then sent into a new control center now, as I'm sure you will be aware. It can't be the cardiac control center because that's heart rate. It can't be the vasomotor control center because that's vascular shirt. Now it goes into the respiratory control center that is located in the medulla oblongata next to the two previously mentioned control centers. So it gets into there. Now from this point, as we know, we breathe in before we breathe out. So the first thing that happens when we start exercising is those receptors send the information to the respiratory control center. And this respiratory control center, the first thing it does is stimulate a new center. And this center is solely responsible for inspiring or inspiration. And it is called, quite handily, the inspiratory center. So the respiratory control center will then stimulate the inspiratory center. Now the inspiratory center its role is to stimulate the inspiratory muscles to contract during exercise. Now, basically, what happens from here is that we know there's certain inspiratory muscles that are required. We know there's additional muscles. We know there's the generic kind of respiratory muscles. So this inspiratory center now basically stimulates our 
mechanics of breathing for inspiration during exercise. So as long as we know our key components of mechanics of breathing for inspiration, we will be fine here. The only difference we've got to know is that when the first two muscles get stimulated, e.g. we cause our um, diaphragm and external intercostal muscle contract, before that happens, the inspiratory centre, because this is neural now, stimulates two nerves. And the nerves that are stimulated are the phrenic nerve and the intercostal nerve. Now the phrenic nerve directly stimulates the diaphragm, whereas the intercostal nerve directly stimulates the external intercostal muscles. And this causes these two, if you remember, we're at exercise now. So it causes them to contract with more force. Okay, that's the first thing that happens. Now on top of that, as we will remember from um, our mechanics of breathing for inspiration during exercise, we'll remember that there's two additional muscles, the sternocleidomastoid and the pectoralis minor. Now, these two don't contract with more force because they weren't contracting at rest, but they do contract. So these two now contract as well. So we have now a net effect of the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles being stimulated by the phrenic nerve intercostal nerve to contract with more force, and we have the sternocleidomastoid and the pectoralis minor contracting. Now, these two... Because of this happening, then working in conjunction, what happens here is, of course, our ribs don't just move up and out. They move up and out further, okay? Which then means, of course, the space um, with inside, inside our ribcage or thoracic cavity volume is going to increase more, which, of course, means then there is a decrease in thoracic cavity pressure, which then comes down to the fact that we will know now, if we're breathing in and all this happens, more air enters the lungs now if we're looking at this i mean this could also be put in you put into here now you could call this tidal volume okay if you want to make a note of that this will increase our tidal volume now this is what happens then during inspiration um so that goes through this um section so this is the thing i really need to get you focused on so at this point then we've used our receptors on your receptors um to go into the respiratory control center inspiratory center, two nerves that go into the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles. All of this has exaggerated our mechanics of breathing for inspiration during exercise. And because we've exaggerated all the mechanics, more air has gone into our lungs via tidal volume. Now, when this happens, the lungs stretch. And as a result of this, the lung stretch is detected by a receptor that we've used before. But this receptor now takes on a different role to detect lung stretch. And the receptor that we didn't use was baroreceptors. So once inspiration has happened and more air goes into the lungs, when those lungs stretch, the baroreceptors detect this. So they detect an increase in lung stretch. Now, once that has happened, they have to send that information into the respiratory control center, which then sends the information to our new center, which is the expiratory center. So the expiratory center is, has a sole responsibility of stimulating the additional expiratory muscles to contract during exercise. So what happens here then is this, well now there's no nerve required for this one, okay, this one is just going straight into our mechanics of breathing for expiration. But of course, we are talking about exercise here, so it's an exaggerated version of our mechanics of breathing for expiration during exercise. So let's have a look. So what happens at this point, I might ask you to see, how do you feel if I ask you to pause it now, using your previous knowledge, because everything on this slide now could be using previous knowledge. If you paused it now, do you think you could add in what happens at each of these stages? So I need you five seconds to do that. Okay, so hopefully when you're coming back to the screencast, you'll remember that during expiration and exercise, our diaphragm and external intercostal muscles just relax. Okay, now following this, okay, because we're uh, this is an active process now, now what happens is the rectus abdominis and the internal intercostal muscles now contract. They don't contract with more force. You wouldn't get marked down for saying they contract with more force, but they don't contract with more force because they weren't contracted in the first place at rest. Okay, these are additional muscles during exercise. Now this has that knock-on effect, remember, when we breathe out, what happens to our ribs? Well, they go down and in, but now we've got to say, because it's during exercise and we're exaggerating, they go down and in further. On top of that, because our ribs have gone down and in further, that then squeezes the space with inside the rib cage. So that can be translated into thoracic cavity volume increasing, or sorry, decreasing more, which then, of course, increases the pressure because of reduced surface area inside the lungs. So from that, 
the net effect of this is that more air leaves the lungs and it actually by doing that it increases our breathing rate okay if you want to add that in just next to that so it will increase our breathing rate now hopefully uh this makes sense um basically as you can see your prior knowledge on mechanics of breathing and exercise is vital because it's all exactly the same okay so here so you've got this section here so your dr vpa okay your dr vpa exactly the same okay but how we get to there requires a real knowledge of neural control uh, and the receptors. But I suppose this is the hardest one because we've got to differentiate or split up our receptors and know when they kind of come into action at this point. First three during exercise uh, for inspiration. And then the last one, Bayer receptors has a different responsibility this time. And that acts as a result of inspiration. Okay, so... That's what I need you to do. Can you make sure you've made good notes on this? Uh, that would be really, really helpful for the start of the lesson. Okay, thanks very much.